All right, next. Now it looks like there's a little ball going on. Now we need to actually stretch it and make it look like it comes out of the barrel. Now, as I've said before, the animation you'll want to do in the particle animator, not in the ellipsoid particle emitter. However, there is things you can do in here. For example, you could say the velocity of the local or your world variables. And for example, I can set my Z to one. And as you can see, it starts moving into one direction, which is nice, but it's done in the particle emitter. This is not what you want if you're going for animation. So let's set this back to zero. And another thing we need to uncheck is the simulate in world space. Let's uncheck this because we want this to simulate in local space because we will want it to rotate with the turret as we rotate it. All right, let's go down to our particle animator here. And we'll need to add some force to actually go into the right direction. And we need it to move into depth, so that will be our Z. So let's uh, change our Z force to, for example, 10. All right, and as you can see, it goes into the Z direction of the world. We actually want it to go into the Z direction of the turret. So to do that, let's drop our particle system on top of the turret. And it will uh, say we might lose the prefab connection, which is OK for now. And now let's rotate this from the top to make sure it's actually going into the right direction. Now, just to make the uh, values exact here, let's go up and change the Y to minus 90. Perfect. If you're working on your turret and it's facing a different angle, make sure you're only animating the Z here and then uh, rotate it in the right direction. Okay, so that's going well, but now it's more of a bubble cannon than it is something that actually spurs fire. So um, let's change some more values here go down to where it says particle render and instead of billboard let's make it stretched and then our stretch variables would be for example a scale of 0 0.5 and as you can see now all of a sudden we have a beam going on it's a very big beam for example when I play my game you can see that it is huge and it's way too long so we'll need to adjust that but the fire is looking good as you can see the red is pretty aggressive over time and all we need to do is tweak some more variables to make this a little bit more reasonable and we'll do that in the next part